For your system setup, including setting up DICOM and any custom settings on your machine, you're going to want to click on this wrench icon. And I'll go over a quick view of this. You'll want to start on General, and you have your department. Uh, you can change the format of how the person's name appears. Like you can say comma, spaces in between everything, first name, that kind of stuff. And that's the patient and how they're going to show up on there. Whether you want a screensaver, fast storage setting. Now this fast storage setting is for use in during the Cine, like a prospective saving. It, each time you hit that, you it'll go for three seconds, five seconds, or ten seconds. So if you're in a cardiac exam and you're doing all prospective saving, you can set it to three seconds. Scan, hit this, it'll save for three seconds. Hit it, save it for three seconds. Or you can choose a manual where you can click it, let it go, and then click it again when you want it to stop. Now it will only go for a certain amount of time before it runs out of memory. So uh, you can also have it automatically export to removable or network. Set your date and time, color maps, set your English foot switch, your P1 key, which is right here. You can program that to change, like to add the arrow on screen. Trackball sensitivity. Uh, print one, do you want to go to a PC printer or like a black and white thermal printer? Key to the same thing, and you can choose your PC printer here. Uh, when you save, do you want the picture and the info along the top, or just the picture? Video configuration, if in the United States, leave it on NTSC. This video enable and VGA enable, that is with an external module. If you need external video, this will enable that video for you. Same thing with the video print, how much information do you want on there? Key configuration for your function keys, you can have it set it for various functions when you press that button, either a function or a measurement. Probe button, this is specifically for the three button probe. If you want it to freeze, depth, or still save uh, while you're doing the scanning. Function configuration, this is what you want to happen when you unfreeze, how you want your region of interest box to respond uh, for reports, various things here. Enable environmental light. This is an environmental light that is here. If you cover it up, it'll go darker, See, and then you undo it, it goes brighter. I don't know if that can be seen on the video or not, but you can turn that off so the screen doesn't change. One thing you'll notice also is this trackball lights up. That's not an environmental uh, ambient light feature. That's the trackball will light up as soon as you touch it. Uh, the brightness of the keyboard light, um, various items there. Here you can set up custom measurements. So this is, it tells you what is available and you can, first you can add or remove them from the menu. So if I say I want under my carotid package, I don't want this subclavian artery on my B. I can just uncheck these and have various things not appear on the menu. This is where you'll add it or remove it. I can move them up or down on the menu. This is exactly how it'll appear when I hit the calc button on screen. That's how that menu will appear. And you have your B mode, your Doppler. You can move those up and down. What will appear? and you can adjust the various calculations within that package and you can also add your own measurements. Your own folder will give you this little plus button where you'll have multiple measurements below it. But if you just want to add a measurement there you'll click add, say new measurement and you can give it a name here and go down and follow these instructions for whatever it is that you want to add to that custom measurement and it will appear. I'm going to go ahead and remove that measurement. Some general things. Lips method to take the area. Uh, you font size your measurements. How many heart rate cycles you want it to calculate for M mode or pulse wave Doppler. Uh, how to show your measurement results. Follicle measurements. Your units for distances. And what are your preferences for your OB formulas. Comments. You can... Here's how you want to when you search for a comment, the font size. If you want to add or remove to your library, your library are here, say cardiac, here's what's available and what you want to display on there. You can move them up to the bottom, down, delete them and change your comments or abbreviations. Body markers work very much the same way. 
you report. Here are the items you can add or remove to your report. And obviously, there's some custom things you can do here. Templates I'm not going to get into. In general, you can add your own logo here and update it then. And this is how do you want the image layout to be on your report. DICOM setup. Okay. This is a very complicated procedure, but uh, on this machine, it's not too bad. In general, when before you do your DICOM, there's some things that you must have uh, in order to complete it, and you have to talk to your IT person, first of all, to get your network set up, and we'll do that first. Mine has something called DHCP. You have to talk to your IT department to find out if you use DHCP or static IP address. Just send them a picture of this information and say, I need this. I even need to know if it's an IP address automatically or if you need this specific information. Only they can give you this information. Nobody else can. You have to contact them and find out what this is. So you won't be able to connect to your network without this. Um, if you have a network storage, you would also get this information from them. And really, it's just easiest if they give you that information and give you the shared directory names, and then you would just click Add, and it will, be show, it will show up down there. Let's go back to the settings. When you do this, it'll say connected or it won't say connected once you get it all figured out. You can also ask your IT department to give you a test IP address. To It's also called ping, so you, they would give you that to ping. So for DICOM, there's some information you have to have in order to get a DICOM storage set up. This is called an AE title, your port number, IP address, and they may or may not give you an alias name to put it under. So you're going to select your service, and that could be storage, print, work list, or structured reports. And the AE title they will give you has to be typed in exactly as they give it to you. One of the most common problems with setting up DICOM are people do not look at the AE title correctly. Next most common problem is to not give it a correct port number. If you are not given the exact port number, it won't be accepted by the DICOM server. Leave the timeout as a default. Host IP, they type this in exactly as given, and you may or may not need an alias. This manual is when, does it, when do you want it to send? So if you say each time they send exam, you can follow, meaning when you as soon as you press end exam, it will go directly to that DICOM server. Of course, you'll have to make sure you're connected each time. Once you get that done, go ahead and click OK. Get back to this screen. So I have this new one set up. It says not tested, not verified. You will not be able to work without verifying this. If it is not verified, it won't appear and won't let you do it. By the way, this local AE, uh, your radiology person who gave you all this information here, uh, may say that your machine has to have a name. So you might call it like Sono Book 9 or give it your name and don't worry about the port number unless they give you something. So here, the one that is connected, if I click modify, you can see my settings here. And I didn't need an alias for my DICOM server. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I can verify and it says success, true, and I'm all set to go. So if you do not get this verify, Something is incorrect in your settings. If you were able to hear on the network, if you were able to ping, and it, is, says, it says it's connected, but you get to this point and it says it's not verified or disconnected, you're not going to be allowed to send anything over the network. This default true is saying what is the default net DICOM server you want to send it to. You can just click here and swap them back and forth. I want that to be my default. Now, I don't want this one here because it doesn't work. I'm going to go ahead and click delete, and that's setting up your DICOM and your network. Preset, this is where we did uh, our imaging presets. Note that I can change these names and modify various things for it. But this is where you would adjust all your custom presets and things like that. You can also export that configuration and import it into another system. And your system settings, um, this is where you'll go uh, if a technician may be asking you for your software version. Basically, you'll want to take a picture of this page and send it to Providian uh, or you know, whatever technician, whether it's me or someone else, uh, will give you, will need this to see your system software version. Printer management is the same as what you saw uh, early in a video when you clicked on that. You could set up your printers that way. And these are all the default drivers that are included. This export log you may or may not ask for, uh, be asked for. 
uh, license key uh, that you can export that for importing later. And these basically just tell you what's available and what is not on your system. If you do not have a license key yet, you would put that key input there. And here you can back up all your patients in the current system. I'm going to click no. Click OK. And that concludes our training on the Chison Sono Book 9 portable ultrasound machine. Thanks for watching.